This is a quick video tutorial of how to rebuild a 7000 valve. First power it down, unplug the motor and the power cord to the circuit board. On certain models there will be a meter cable as well. One number two Phillips screw right there. Push the board to the left and it'll pop forward. Now remove the second number two Phillips screw down below. And we're going to change camera angles here to show you how to move the brine cam into position so that you can remove the drive motor assembly. I've enhanced the uh, picture here to show you the proper positioning of the two arrows. They should face each other. Next, you're going to remove a small quarter inch screw from the underside. This is not going to be found on older models, only on the newest versions of the 7000 SXT. Anything after about 2011 you'll start finding this screw. If it's not there, just skip this part. There are two small tabs. Just give them a little tweak as you push up on the valve. That'll allow it to be released. Lift up, pull forward. The motor and drive trim assembly are now removed. Now we're going to remove the four screws that hold on the backing plate. There's a 5 16 and 3 3 8 inch drive screws. You can use a flat edge screwdriver as well. Be sure to line up the piston guide flat when you pull the backing plate off. You'll see that when we remove it right now. I did speed that last part of the video up as well just to uh, save a few seconds of time. Now the entire internals of the valves are exposed. Now you simply pull the brine valve forward. It pops right out. There's an o-ring underneath it. Be sure to replace that o-ring when you rebuild the valve. I'll show it to you right there. That o-ring's probably a couple bucks. Definitely replace it. Pull the piston out. It comes out as a full assembly. I just dropped a spacer there, or a seal. I'm going to remove the seal and spacer kit. When you get to the last one, it gets kind of deep in the valve, so you may need a screwdriver to extract that last one. You can see they come out fairly easily, as long as you pull them out straight. Now again, the last one gets kind of deep, so I just use a... Uh, long screwdriver. Now you can use it on any tool. Fleck does make a special tool for this. Again, not necessary unless you're doing this for a living. I really wouldn't recommend investing that kind of money. You should only have to rebuild this valve about every 5 to 15 years depending on your water. Now we're going to install a new seal and spacer kit. The first one, the first seal is difficult if you've never done this before. You notice I use a screwdriver just to help seat it properly in the back of the valve. There is a land, a flat spot in the back of the valve where that seal needs to go. We're going to alternate spacer, seal, spacer. You notice right there that's a special tool designed by Fleck for this valve. Not necessary. Um, just happened to have a spacer sitting on the tool, so figured I'd use it. But again, not necessary at all. It does help to use it to install the seals. Really, if you're doing this for a living, it's a good investment. If you're just doing this on a rare occasion, I wouldn't bother with the tool for this particular valve. So other Fleck valves, the tool can be very useful. Again, you'll notice we're just going to continue with the seal and spacers till the entire pack has been replaced. Only takes a minute to do. Very, very easy valve to rebuild. Now we're going to install the last seal. And then you're going to push in a new piston assembly. After that, you're going to install a new brine valve with the new O-ring. O-ring in first. Be sure that's seated flat in the back. Very important if that gets in there incorrectly, the valve will not function properly. We'll get a leak at the brine valve. Go ahead and push in the brine valve, and you're basically rebuilt. When you rebuild the valve, you should also replace a few auxiliary O-rings. The O-ring on the brine line flow control assembly right there. Just simply pop off the o-ring, grab a new one, and reinstall. Put it back into the valve. This will usually be attached to the brine line. It'll look a little different when you're rebuilding it, but you get the point. The drain line assembly also has a small o-ring on it. Be sure to replace that when you rebuild the valve. I apologize, I got out of camera there, but you get the point. There's an O-ring, remove it and replace it with a new one. And I'll also show you there's a little gray retaining clip. Very simple to replace, important to do. Now we're going to put the backing plate back on. 
There's a keyed slot on the piston there. I'm showing it with the screwdriver. That should be facing down when you reassemble the valve. Now slide the backing plate over that guide, push over the brine valve, and install your four screws. Now reinstall the four screws that were removed earlier. I did speed this part of the video up slightly again just to save a few seconds. Not really that difficult. Once the four screws are reinstalled, we're going to put on the motor and drivetrain assembly. Next coming up is the motor and drivetrain reassembly. The first thing you have to do is align these two parts here, the motor drivetrain assembly and the piston. I've pre-done this just so it assembles a little quicker, a little easier. You would want to install the power cord first, start to push down the motor and drivetrain at that point, stop and align it. I've already pre-aligned it so it simply pops right down. Right here is where you'd stop, align it, push the piston in and out slightly, and then push the power and drivetrain straight down. Put the cord through its retainers and you're good to go to the next step. Now go ahead and reinstall this quarter inch drive screw from earlier. Again, this is not on all Flex 7000 SXT valves, just the newer ones. Now reinstall the number two Phillips screw from earlier. On the board, you'll notice there's a notch that lines up to that piece there and the hole that lines up to the hole on the board. Also on the back there's an optical encoder. This is an optically controlled valve. There are no micro switches, no mechanical switches. Push that in and key it on the other side. Locks right into place. Put in the number two screw that we removed earlier and you're going to reconnect the power cord and the motor. There may also on some valves be a meter cable which will go right there. Now we're going to resynchronize the valve. It is now arrow to arrow. We're going to reset that back to arrow to the letter S. S is for service. Those need to line up perfectly. We're going to look at a couple other parts of the 7000 valve. A red clip, it's common on the valve, simply removes. You might have to push that cap down before you do this if the system was under pressure. There's a lever point there. This is designed for easy removal. This cap does have an o-ring on it. Please replace it if it's very old. Inside there is the injector assembly and the injector screen. The injector screen, easily removed with just a small needle nose. There's a little tab for that as you can see there. And the injector is removed with the red clip. The red clip is a tool that has a keyed slot on it right there for removing the injector. The injector simply lifts straight up. To reinstall the injector, you simply push it down, yellow side down. The different color injectors are used for different size tanks. The screen drops right into place. The cap, you should always put a new o-ring on that if it's over a few years old. It is keyed, only going one way. Push it down and insert the red clip. That locks it back into place. If your valve is a metered valve, the turbine may need replacement in the future as they do wear out. It is a moving part. They last for many years, but replacement may become necessary. These red clips I'm showing you are safety devices as well as what retain the bypass into the valve and the plumbing connectors into the bypass. You notice they have wedge points just like we showed you earlier on the brine cap. Easy to remove, pull the valve and the bypass apart, and this will give you access to the meter turbine. Inside the valve, the gray piece of plastic, this is easily removed with a small pair of needle nose. It just pulls out and pushes back in with a new turbine. Very easy to replace. Here I'm simply showing that the turbine does spin freely. That would usually indicate a good turbine. It just simply pushes into the valve. It's retained by the bypass or the plumbing connectors that you will install later. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I hope it was informative and I will be doing more valves in the future.